broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics, along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm, pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. I'm Nathan Mum, your host. And a technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise. It says I'm getting older and older. And our co-host here, Mike Gorday, is in the studio today. Mike's an award-winning author and human behavior expert. Now, today we are live streaming our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. We are friends from different backgrounds, but we bring the best technology show possible weekly for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. We're glad to have ODR producer at the control panel today. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. All right. Today on Tech Time with Nathan Moe, we bring you a whirlwind of headlines that leave your circuits buzzing. It seems Google has had a change of heart, or maybe it was the relentless class action lawsuit, but the search giant has finally bowed to the pressure. Google has agreed to delete billions of incognito mode data records. Yes, you heard it right here. Your private browsing history will now actually vanish into the digital abyss. So next time you're in incognito mode, rest assured your secrets are safe. Or are they? Uh are they? Well, we'll talk about We've that. talked and, about that before. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that again today. A new question is being asked. Why does artificial intelligence make stuff up? Picture a seven-year-old caught red-handed with cookie crumbs on their face, spinning tales about the invisible cookie monster. Well, AI isn't much different. It can create stories, fabricate facts, and weave intricate narratives into information that we believe is real. But fear not, we're digging into what has to be done to make this change. Then have you ever wondered what life might be like if your hoverboards were real? Or what if you zipped around in flying cars? China is looking into the future with flying cars specifically that transform. Now, nothing is better. If you're going to have a car that moves into a uh, flying vehicle, nothing's better than having a little bit of a transformer with it at the same time, right? I, I mean, don't think it's the same thing you're thinking of. Well, it's not quite. No, that's, that's correct. Okay. And... We have our guest that will show us how to save those memories of pictures, slides, and Polaroids as we have our guest, the CEO of Vivid Picks, joining the show today. In addition, of course, we have our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment, the technology fail of the week, a possible Nathan Nugget, and, of course, our pick of the day whiskey tasting to see if our selected whiskey pick of the day gets zero, one, or two thumbs up by the end of the show. Now, though, it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right. Story number one, Google agrees to delete billions of incognito mode data records. The tech giant will have to wipe private browsing data after a class action lawsuit. Let's go to David Larson with more on the story. Google has promised to delete billions of browsing activity records in its incognito mode after a class action lawsuit was filed in a California federal court. Google tracks and collects consumer browsing history and other web activity data, no matter what safeguards consumers undertake to protect their data privacy. Indeed, even when Google users launch a web browser with private browsing mode activated, as Google recommends to users wishing to browse the web privately, Google nevertheless tracks the user's browsing data and other identifying information. How safe is incognito mode on the Chrome browser? Mike and Nathan. I am sure you will cover this again for all the listeners. Back to you in the studio. All right, incognito mode. Incognito means from your boss. (laughs) Yeah, that means that essentially uh, it doesn't save your history of what you're browsing, but it doesn't mean it doesn't track it. It just doesn't save it in your browser. 
So essentially, if you're doing something like watch the NCAA tournaments and you don't want anybody to know about it, you do it in incognito mode. So that way, yeah. when you close the browser, this happens every a, year, uh, every right? year at this time. At yeah, this when, time, yeah, that's exactly correct. But under the settlement, Google said now it will delete billions of data records and also provide greater transparency of the data it collects, letting users know that what data is collected each time incognito mode is launched. So, so essentially, they're going to come up with a warning window. You're going to launch incognito. I've already seen this. It comes on up and says, we're going to track this, 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 this. Hit OK to proceed. So if you choose really, not, they're not to. They're really, they're not doing anything but but putting a warning label. That's all they're doing. Because essentially. That's awesome. They, so they announced the big launch of incognito mode that was supposed to have private browsing. But essentially, it's been displaying information. People still can have cookie information that they gather from it, where you go, all the information. And Google has done this. For the last five years, when they essentially release this as a brand new added feature. Now, every browser adapted the same type of deal where they have privacy mode or private mode. Um, there are a couple browsers that actually don't track the information that's there, but uh, Google did never that said. We know of. Yeah, the Google never said that they weren't going to track it, and of course they are. The plaintiff asked for $5 billions in damages, but the settlement holds no payment from Google. Individual users, though, can instead pursue damages. By filing complaints against Google in the United States courts, 50 people have already pursued this process. Are, are you on that process? Uh, no, because I already know they already chose. I mean, so, uh, so not only does Google capture your data, but Comcast, who I use for my internet provider, captures they know what your I data. do too. Yeah. So Comcast is collecting my data because I'm using their pipe. And then Google collects my data because I'm using their browser to do uh, anything. You Again, we've said this. Yeah, do they, not they, do anything on your computer or the Internet you don't want someone to know about because everything is tracked. Well, they told me something I didn't know the other day when I was in, in their Xfinity store is that Xfinity has their own sidewalk feature. Oh, they do? Yes. I did not know that. So they have one just like the Amazon. Uh, That's what they said. Oh, I bet you they do. I should look into that uh, a little bit more. So essentially I've you're been, sharing the Internet I've out been, to your neighbor? I, yeah, because I've been having all these spikes in my data usage and have been going over my data plan. Oh. And so they were like, yeah, well, this is really weird. Look at this. Look at this. Did you turn off your sidewalk? I'm like, I didn't know I had sidewalk on Xfinity. So did they reimburse you or did you still have to pay the bill? Oh, I fixed it. Okay. All right, there you go. All right. Well, a Google spokesman said in a statement, we are pleased to settle this lawsuit which we always believed was meritless. We never associate data with users when they use incognito mode, liars. We are happy to delete old <laughs> technical data that was never associated with an individual and was never used in any form of personalization. So do you use incognito mode, Mike? No, I don't bother. Uh, neither I do mean, I. I mean, I'm not really, what a waste of time. I'm not really on there doing anything I shouldn't be doing, and there's nobody around to check on me anyway. So, so you just say, uh, just, there you go. That's, that makes sense. All right, story number two. Are you excited about this one? Oh, I'm always excited okay, about right. bashing AI. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what we got going on next here. You know, we, we've we talked about how AI makes up stuff. Yeah. We'll give false information quite a bit. Yep. Um, the question is, is there anything that's being done about it? Okay. Uh, so there's an important distinction between using AI to generate content and answering questions. One of the problems that we've had seen in the past. Less than two years ago, cognitive and computer scientist Douglas Hofstadter demonstrated how easy it was to make AI hallucinate. I don't know why they use that term. When he asked a nonsensical question in OpenAI's ChatGPT3, replied, the Golden Gate Bridge was transported for the second time across Egypt in October of 2016. Hmm. Now, that doesn't, sound, that doesn't sound like that really happened. No, no, but we, we've we've seen this happen over yep. and over again. Yep. So Chat GPT three point five. Yeah. Which powers the free version of Chat GPT. That's like their low end. That's like the low hanging fruit one. The yep. old one. Okay. Yeah. Now that that tells you there is no record or historical event indicating that the Golden Break Bridge, which is located in San Francisco, California, USA, was ever transported across Egypt. So somebody fixed that. Okay. Uh, it's a good example of how quickly these AI models evolve, but for all improvements on this front, you still need to be on guard. See, this is where I start having these big issues. Yeah. Is because humans interact with this, and they're going to be getting false information yep. somewhere. Okay. All, AI chatbots continue to, and I, I don't like the term hallucinate because that implies something a little different okay. than lying. So. Okay. So AI they're, chat, they're fibbing. They're fibbing. AI chatbots continued to provide false information, 
and present material that isn't real, even if the errors are less glaringly obvious. Okay. Chatbots confidently deliver this information as fact, which has already generated plenty of challenges for tech companies and headlines for media outlets. This is kind of like psychopaths do. Okay. Taking a more nuanced view, hallucinations are actually both a feature and a bug, and there's an important distinction between using an AI model as a content generator and tapping into it to answer questions. It's a good reminder that generative AI is still very much a work in progress, even as companies like Google and Adobe showcase tools that can generate games and music to demonstrate where the technology is headed. Uh, I, this article asks what an AI hallucination is, and their their definition is the generative AI model hallucinates when it delivers false or misleading information. I Again, I have a lot of problems with this because it implies more going on. A hallucination is... is is not what's going on here. This okay. is this is just providing I guess this false is now information. The, I guess this is now the official term for when an AI makes I, a mistake. I, I think they, this, just, they don't they don't is, want to call it lying. So this is AI a lying. yeah. This is a misapplication of psychological terms. Well, this, okay, and this is like the standard now for AI. This is what they call anything that's incorrect is not that it was they had the wrong data or they had the wrong. They li- need to li- stop because that 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 implies other things going. Because when you when you hallucinate, yeah. You yourself are experiencing an unreal situation. Okay. I don't think that really applies to this. Okay. Frequently excite, uh, cited example comes from February 2023 when the Google Bard chatbot, now called Gemini, was yeah, they had asked to rename about, it because they were so bad with Bard and they had so many issues. This specific issue here got national press. Oh, when it was asked about uh, NASA's James yep. Webb Space Telescope? Yeah. Yeah, it, in, it, incorrect, it, it incorrectly said that the telescope took the first pictures of an exoplanet outside of our solar system, which was not correct. Was not correct. That was in a part of their demo. That's what they asked during their launch demo. Google had uh, not done their research and what they were looking for, and just off the cuff, they decided to do that. I, as I have lines. I have major problems with people rolling out these things and let letting the public work through the bugs. Okay, <laughs> that's how that's how video game companies do it, isn't it? I have a problem with that too. Okay, <laughs> all right. So let's unpack this for a little bit. For example, an AI model that can generate text and was trained on Wikipedia's purpose is to generate text that looks and sounds like the posts we already see on the platform. In other words, the model is trained to generate data that is statistically indistinguishable from the training data, or that has the same type of generic characteristics. There's no requirement for that to be true. Uh, can you prevent these falsehoods? I'm I'm not going to say hallucination. Okay. Can you? Uh, can you? I, I don't think so. No, they cannot be stopped. Okay. But the their their advice is to, is hire, to manage them. Is to hire people. One way is to ensure the training data is of high quality and yeah. adequate breadth and the model is tested at various checkpoints. Okay. So they're they're saying that wherever the chatbot is drawing its information from, it better be good information. Or they want to put in some legislation to have people wake, make sure that it works. This is so dumb. <laughs> so you can say, I, I, so you're worried about it, losing jobs. You're going to have more jobs to it, make sure that the AI stuff that they do uh, is correct. Okay. All right. Let's, 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 let's turn that... <laughs> that piece of smuts and into something useful. Okay. AI's jet chat GPT four can browse the internet. If it doesn't know the answer to a query and, and will cite where the information came from. Yep. Uh, Microsoft also can search the web for relevant content to inform its responses. Copilot also includes links to websites where users can verify responses. Yep. Okay. But as human beings, we don't do that. Well, I don't know. I, I, I do. So when I use Most Copilot. Most people don't. Most people. I, I, see, I do. I do click on it and say, our, okay, is this. Our brains are heuristically geared. Okay. Unless we have some reason to check out the sources, we're not going to. The 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 normal dude that's sitting there when he wants to query a, uh, something. Yeah. Like, does my incognito mode keep my information safe? safe? And it goes, yeah, sure. No problem. It's designed that way, right? He's not going to go and check the sources for that. Well, He's going to be like, "Yeah, that's great. Well, I hope See, I would. knew it. I hope. I hope." And then, would. and then, when the you know, 
the law enforcement comes along for doing something dumb. No, that like, but I was said it was protected. <laughs> Will we ever get to a point where AI doesn't have these problems? Mm, probably not. Okay. Researchers are still working to mitigate them, which is better training data, improved algorithms, and fact-checking mechanisms. In the short term, the technology companies behind generative AI tools have added disclaimers about these problems. Uh, human oversight is another one which you were talking about a minute ago, but it may also come down to government policies to ensure guardrails are in place. So, yes, I think we need that stuff. Okay. Or we just shouldn't be using this right now. All right. Great. But, you know, progress is progress. All right. Let's go to story number three here. All right. Odie, did you, you, you had something on last night's production show that you would like to talk about. Let's talk about this. Yeah, um, as you know, anyone living with an incurable illness faces the agony of fearing that they will miss out on future precious precious moments with their family. Yep. But, for example, from attending a child's wedding to taking a special holiday, 10 people living with secondary breast cancer have been given a glimpse into the future that they may not get to see. Okay. Uh, photographer Julian Edelstein took photographs of these 10 people and used AI to make up the Gallery of Hope at London's Saatchi Gallery. So essentially, all these 10 people got to choose a moment that they may not see in the future. And combined with the photographer and an AI, they got to see an image of what that could look like, that special event could look like. So yeah. we have a woman uh, celebrating her 60th birthday as a dancer while her husband is in the crowd. We have another mother who is um, celebrating the graduation of her youngest son with her two other kids as well. Another one in a wedding. It's just a, a nice, cute way that AI is for the good, Mike. Okay? For the good. For the good. Of creating a, a different reality. And creating or... a different reality and creating a... Creating a different reality. That's a key concept okay, right there. Okay, maybe not creating a different reality, this is a, but... This is, okay, this is, this some... is applying fantasy to something that... Okay, well, maybe not fantasy, but ...can also, generate hope, right? That's... I mean, it can give you peace. You know, these yeah. people have been given months to live, like, sometimes years, if they're lucky. Um, they'd like to know that in the future, this is what that would look like. But it's for the person that's that's yeah. suffering, right? Yeah, it's for the that, person that's suffering. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I think it's nice. I think it's cute. And I, you know, I hope that it'll be something that more people can do Okay. in the future. I, yeah. Just think of that. I, I, it's kinda... I don't know if it's really that effective, but, well, you know. You... Well, I, I, these people seem to have quite a bit of a... That's 10 people. Well, they just uh, did it for 10 people. Yeah, You'd have to really all... do a really con uh, concise study of a lot of people to see if this has any real uh, negative effects. I mean, sure, but, you know, one of the women described that uh, it was a, as much as, as, as beautiful as the image was, it was all, also very overwhelming to see that because, you know, she because might not she knew that. she wasn't going to be there. Right. So that that right there is considerable extra stress that she may or may not have needed. Right. Okay, I guess that's I mean, good. you could see it like that, but you could also see it in the way of like, okay, this is a great so, way. So, yeah, in the meantime, this woman is going to be generating I hope mean, off of people's disease so that she can make money well, to I fund I her, the, the, the to fund her low, AI low, driven. Low, low, low pessimist. Well, hold on. Uh, all right, <laughs> Have all right. you seen those like images of people where they take, you know, black and white photographs and use AI to put yeah. them in color? Yeah. How is that bad? Uh, those are pretty you cool. Know. I'm, I'm not really but talking about a, colorizing you know, old black and white movies. Okay, I'm well, you know about, what? We're going to be talking about I'm how talking to, about. I'm talking about how to, using, using something to put a fantasy together for somebody to give them hope. Well, that's kind of like make, make a wish. It's not right? to give them hope, though. It's just, you know. What is it for, then? It's All just right. a little piece of satisfaction. I, I thought it was very good. All right, let's move on to story it's number four. Okay. All right. Okay, European flying car technology sold to China, powered by a BMW engine and normal fuel. The air car flew for 35 minutes between two airports in 2021 using runways to take off and land. Let's go to Corinne Westland for more on the story. It took just over two minutes to transform from a car into an aircraft. This transformer-like flying car technology from Air Car Aircraft has been sold to China. 
China is designing vehicles to be used within a specific geographical region of its country. Hebei Jianxin Flying Car Technology Company, headquartered in Kangzhou, has purchased exclusive rights to manufacture air car aircraft, and the firm has built its own airport and flight school for this type of air travel. Having led the way in developing the EV revolution, China is now actively developing flying transport solutions. So does that make you go hum? Mm. Um. Um. All right. Well, last month, a firm called Autoflight carried out a test flight of a passenger carrying drone between the cities of Shenzhen and Zhuhai. The journey, which took three hours by car, was completed in 20 minutes, it said, although the aircraft contained no passengers. Now, the UK government has said flying taxis could become a regular feature of the skies by 2028, but air car does not take off and land vertically, and it <coughs> does require a runway. Now, KleinVision declined to say how much it had sold the technology for, but AirCar was issued with a certificate of airworthiness by the Slavic Transportation Authority in 2022 and featured a video published by YouTuber Mr. Beast earlier this year. There's still considerable hurdles for this form of transportation in the term of infrastructure, regulation, and the public acceptance of the technology itself. This brave new world of personal transportation is acting as a great lever, said aviation consultant Stephen Wright. Similar concerns once applied to the electric cars in which China has become a global market leader. Global attempts to regulate the sector, though, has left everyone scrambling to come up with a whole new set of questions that need to be asked. In respect to the West's histories, that we can sometimes move slowly over here and that we aren't as tempted into trying to figure out new technologies. Similar concerns once applied to the electric cars in which China has become the global market leader. Now, Mr. Wright said that while prototypes like the air car were great fun, the reality is it was likely to end up being more mundane with the queues and baggage checks and what's and what's nots that happen at your local airport. So that kind of does make sense, right? Well, if you're going to start doing this okay, and have so, your car take off, it's probably going to be a check-in, check-out process. Yeah, it's going to be like a, a smaller grade airport, right? Yep. Yeah, I have one why in my would, back in, in, in my they, town. Why wouldn't they do that with just Cessnas? If they're going to be air taxis, why don't they do that with just regular airplanes? Um, th- they're probably cheaper to make. Than a- <laughs> it's probably not as cool as this transforming car, though, right? I, I'm I'm pretty sure cool factor is not a huge thing for econ- econom- economics. Econ- or <laughs> economy, or economy, you have to do that. Okay. I can't even speak today, man. <laughs> All right, well, that's right. You got you got the Nathan Mumism. All right, there you go. Well, yep. that ends our top technology stories of the week. Up next, we have our guest Rick Voigt, who has spent his career helping people take, make, and share pictures. And his clients have been excited with essentially the ability to take a picture itself that's blurry, maybe out of focus, and actually refocus it in and then create a narrative story with the picture itself to save on a digital era uh, process so you can look at it later. All right. Well, we're going to head out of this commercial break at 88 miles per hour into the next segment. So see you after this commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Our weekly show covers the top technology subjects without a political agenda. We verify the facts and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course, with a little whiskey on the side today, Mark Gregoire, our whiskey connoisseur, is back in studio. So Mike and I can ask questions about the whiskey and see what our special taste is. I, I know that this is some limited, unique bottle. So Mark... What have you chosen for us today? Thank you, Nathan and Mike. It is a mouthful. We are drinking today Rossville Union Single Barrel 
Cast Strength Rye. It is Benny's handpicked number 159 2021 selection. Wow. Okay. Whew. Whew. Now, from Rossville Union's website, they talk about this, and they say the famous 95% rye mash bill, aged seven years in a barrel from Kelvin Cooperage, robust and delicious, herbaceous rye spice is up front on the nose as dried citrus, Bartlett pear, roasted almonds, vanilla custard, and toasted oak settle right behind. On the palate, chewy pear candy and caramel chocolate covered orange, sweet cinnamon, and some tea leaves. The finish is long and pleasant with caramel and the tea ever eventually outlasting the other flavors. Dense and delicious. This is a rye lover's rye. Wow. Now, this is from Ross and Squibb, which is MGP. Okay. It's from the Rossville Distillery, which is now the Ross and Squibb Distillery in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. It's a straight rye, seven years, 115 proof. It is 95% rye, 5% malted barley. And at the time when this was purchased, it was $65. All right. How much is it on the rye? <laughs> how much can you purchase it now for, though? It's not really a secondary market okay. type whiskey. Okay. It's got a strong bite, man. It, now, it, it attacks it's, it's you. It's a big rye. Yeah, it, it attacks you right out of the get-go. It, it does not hold anything back. It's like, boom. But it doesn't have a, a bad aftertaste, though. The aftertaste dissipated pretty well. You agree? Oh, sure. Well, yeah, <laughs> now, now, your listeners in the Midwest will know Binnie's. It is kind of like our total wines out here in the West. Oh. It is throughout Illinois. And uh, even though they don't have this particular number 159 anymore, they have continued to do picks of Rossville Union, so you can get their latest pick there. Perfect. All right. Well, Mark, I'm excited to hear what our special day is of the day a little bit later on the show. So you're going to want to make sure you stay to that for your, good one today. your we're Mark's Mumbles after our segments we have coming up here. But now, with our first whiskey tasting complete, let's move on to our feature segment of our Technology Insider. Today we have Rick Voigt joining us. Previously, wor- Rick worked at Kodak, where through various sales and marketing roles, uh, he completed his tenure as the Vice President and National Sales Manager. Now, at Hewitt Packard HP, Rick helped create the Retail Publishing Solutions Division. He is the CEO of Vivid Picks. His company invents and harnesses technology, making it simple for individuals and organizations to relive their memories of shared stories. Let's welcome Rick to the Comcast video stream and start our next segment. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right, Rick, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Nathan, Mike, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's not not a problem. I'm excited. Hi, Rick. I'm excited to have you on and talk about your your project. So let's talk a little bit about uh, last month. I think it was the last day, or maybe it was the thirtieth. I don't know if it's the thirtieth or the thirty first, but it was National Backup Day. Was it the thirtieth or the thirty first, Rick? What, which day was it? The thirty first. Oh, the thirty first. Okay. All right. So this is essentially a day where it's important to back up those items that you need. You should make sure you back up your computer of any data because when your hard drive crashes and you don't have any data backed up, that's when your profanity laced uh, insults to the computer happen at a large rate. But really, I do that every day. Oh, you do that every as matter day. Of, as a matter of course. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Rick, explain what your product is and how you created it. Well, thank you for, again for having me on. And photos are are a prompt to a memory. So we like to say, don't let your memories fade. So as we take pictures through time, they fade. And that's due to heat, light, and humidity. And, and so similarly, as time progresses, oftentimes we we, we forget things and we work, for instance, in, in the senior living facilities. And, and we want to make sure that memories are captured and shared prior to losing the knowledge. So Vivid Pics, we're all about A, scanning images in a very high quality way. B, bringing back the life through improving color, contrast, lightness and sharpness all at once with literally one click patented software. And then capturing the voice narrative. So what did these pictures mean to us? And that way we're able to make sure the knowledge is not lost. And then we stream all that information together in a movie, an MP4 file. So quickly and easily, we're able to share our thoughts and our memories of photos and pastimes. All right. Now, now you actually use a, a specific technology, like a scanner that you have on here. You guys actually took a, a device that was on market and you kind of optimize it. Explain a little bit about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so we work with um, the PFU division, uh, which is ScanSnap, and ScanSnap originally was was created by Fujitsu. That division has has been purchased by Rico since, and Rico is actually a pretty cool company. They they purchased Pentex through the year. For those of you who may uh, understand some old camera uh, companies. And, and what we looked at with the device is, is that it does a top-down scan of your photos, your documents, and even mementos up to an inch and a half tall that can help tell the story. And when we work with libraries and archives, they need the file format in what's called TIFF, which is a lossless image file. And this, and this device was capturing in JPEG or PDF, which is wonderful for the common consumer. But... Uh, but our customers are general consumers as well as professional individuals. So we took control of the, of the Twain in order to capture in TIFF, lost this file. And then we, we, with that, then are able to bring it through our process and output JPEGs for standard consumers and, and the TIFF for, for um, higher end consumers. All right. So, so I, I, I saw so many demos of this and I, I saw all your guys' uh, testimonials that you have on your website and, and, it looks like you have this like placed in libraries. You have a, a scanner that comes on in. And so essentially you're putting a, a picture down on a flat surface, right? You have this camera that kind of does a scan that, that comes all the way out to the picture and then back into the picture itself. And then from there, there's a user interface. And so I was really interesting as the user interface, not not probably the most graphically enhanced, but it, but it does have a, some simple features that essentially allows people to – add different items to the photos, a little bit of memories, explain a little bit on how easy this product is to restore a photo and then what you can do with that photo. Absolutely. As you captured in my introduction, I um, spent a bunch of years at Kodak way back when. Um, and, and George Eastman, the founder of Kodak, had a pretty good idea, which was you press the button, we do the rest. And technology should be easy. Technologists like ourselves, we should be able to, to, allow the tech to be easily used and not require the user to, to have difficulty. So we did um, many different interactions with senior care facilities, with librarians, professional genealogists, everyday people, in order to just make it one click all the way through. So scanning an image is literally as easy as clicking a button. And you can scan up to 10 images at one time, automatically straightening and cropping those images to do something more with. Um, click restore. Automatically, all of those images that you have scanned come into your queue. And with that one click, you're able to choose which image looks best to you through a patented algorithm in order to be able to make them look great. Um, and then three with one click, I can I can record a memory to be attached to that image file, and then be able to combine those images and voices to a single movie. So everything has been designed for those who who may not be comfortable with technology, um, and and even for those that that might have um, more early stage cognitive decline. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to ask Mike that a little bit. That's your mesmerizing question. I'm going to ask about pictures and, and the history a little bit later today because I do think it makes a difference. And I know that it's interesting because as we get older and we start forgetting stuff, those memories and those pictures are so important to the people that own them. But I was so devastated when my great grandmother passed away and everybody came over to her house and took everything out of the house except for her photo album. She left the photo atoms stayed there. Nobody wanted them. Maybe it was because they were analog photos and, and people didn't want to capture the history. But she had spent years and years putting these photo albums together. And I think having a digital process where I could put it up onto a YouTube file or something that I could watch at a later time would have been much more served than just throwing those away and, and, and emptying it all that time and effort. So I, this is kind of a, a, a little passion part of what I need to make sure that I do when I – pass on and, and hopefully my kids can watch a video or two of me. Maybe they'll see Mike ne right next to me and then they can say, oh, that was my dad. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, last thing, if Peter. You thank, thank you for bringing that up 
So you're not alone that unfortunately those books, because the people don't, the, the, the loved ones who are still around don't know who and why that picture was important. And that's exactly what we're, what we're solving here is this is that, do you have an interest to know where you came from? Do you have an interest? And in maybe that was my loved one when they were 20 and they were traveling across America on Route 66. And this was an incredible experience. And this was why they did what they did. And you are who you are. And that's exactly the, the, the reason we've created what we've created for them and for you. And it works really so simple. it's explaining the memory to somebody that is not a participant in that memory. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Exactly correct. Yeah, so it takes the picture and then you can record audio for that and you can mm. talk about what happened to that picture itself. Now, Peter, where can people find out our, our show? Or we got to move on to our next segment. So where can people find out more about your product, more about you, maybe get in touch with you directly? We have appreciated you being on our show. This is a major uh, we had we had an opening and I got you in here immediately because this is a, a big passion of me. Where can we find out more information from you? Absolutely. So our website is vivid, as in like vivid colors, V-I-V-I-D dash or hyphen pics. P is in Paul I-X. You'll see memory station right on the home page and then also in the navigation bar memory station. So on our website, vivid dash pics. PIX.com. You'll see tutorial videos. You'll see why this is, is helpful to many. Uh, we have easy installation guides, how to use the product. Uh, we've really tried to create the total solution for all, whether it's a consumer or whether it's a commercial operation. All right. And so you can find these at public libraries at some locations. How much if I don't have this available to me, how much does it cost to get this system so I can do that for all my loved uh, photos? Absolutely. It starts at $799. And with that $799, you are getting this very high-end scanner and this very easy-to-use software. And we sell software the old-fashioned way. We are not a subscription. So when you buy our software, you own the software. You license the software. Okay. And, and so then with that, when we provide updates and provide additional features, you get free updates. Wow. And I'll give you an example of that. So our restore software automatically improves old faded photos, documents, um, has been being sold for, for eight years. Um, our software is sold in over 130 countries. And, and so then with that, we provide free updates. And um, if in fact we come up with additional products and features, like we've done with Memory Station, that's how we can generate incremental revenues. But when speaking with the customers, they don't like subscriptions. No. So that's how that's what why we sell what we sell. We start at seven ninety nine for this package, one ninety nine for the software alone. Perfect. Thank you so much. Now, Peter, we're gonna have to be in touch and see how this goes because I definitely want to touch base and get you on again during a, another holiday time. I want to thank you so much for being here. My sincere pleasure, guys, and uh, I wish I could enjoy that ride with you. It sounds good. I did. Well, it's got a bite. It's got it's a bite. It's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Uh, Thanks, Rick. All right. Well, that ends our Technology yeah. Insider segment. Up next, we have This Week in Technology, so now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side as we're going to be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. Join the fun and grab tickets to GeekFest West, the three-day Geek Festival extravaganza of fun and entertainment that will take place on the third weekend in July. Learn more at geekfest.com. GeekFest will feature diverse activities, including a film festival, vendor hall, street fair, outdoor music festival, cosmic cosplay, and video game tournaments. Join us at GeekFest West, the ultimate celebration of geek culture. To learn more, visit geekfest.com. That is geekfest.com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going all the way back to March 28th, 1935. The first gyroscope controlled rocket launch. Robert Goddard, considered the father of modern rocketry, successfully launches the first gyroscope controlled rocket into orbit. His A5 rocket flew at an altitude of 4,800 feet. Flew horizontally for 13,000 feet and reached a speed of 550 miles per hour. Gyroscope technology is critical for the stabilization of modern flight systems and is used in airplanes and 
spacecraft each and every day. Did you know that? Look at that. Robert Goddard, March 28th, 1935. Big technology. You know, gyroscope helps keep your planes at the altitude levels that they need to, and it has that essentially the sensory control that knows if your plane is level or not level as you're flying. Pretty important thing to have as, as a part of your uh, airplane device that's going on there. Okay, thanks for thanks for all that physics knowledge, buddy. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, that was this week in technology. Have you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over 108 weekly broadcasts spanning four plus years of video, podcasts, and blog information? You can visit us at techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows. You're going to right now go to a commercial break. When we return, we have Mark's Whiskey Mumble Review. See you after this. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com. The, the segment, segment we've been waiting, waiting all week, week for. for. Mark's Whiskey, Whiskey Mumble. Mumble. Well, hello again, gentlemen. gentlemen. Hello. What, what do we, do we got, got here, Mumble? Mumble? Well, well, what, what, what are, are we, we celebrating, celebrating on March 19th? March 19th. March 19th. Or March. I love this day. I so want to celebrate it. Are you on March 19th or April 2nd? Oh, oh, April 2nd. Okay. okay. Where are you? Oh, March 19th. 19th. I don't know what we're so celebrating on March 19th. Yeah, everybody, oh, everybody's on the wrong day. day today. They're, they're in the wrong people. people. The day, day after April, April Fool. Fool. Okay, okay, there you go. go. April, April 2nd. 2nd. Okay. <laughs> crosses it off. April 2nd. He's like, I got to remember that. Okay, there you go. But, but more importantly, importantly what, what is today? today? Uh, I, I should just say that. that. Uh, today, today is the day after April, April. Uh, this, this is, is <laughs> Don't be fooled, Dave. This, this, is, no. this is happy, happy March, March 19th day. day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what, what is it say? say? Odie? Odie? No. 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 All right. Today, today is National, National Ride, Ride Your Horse to a Bar Day. Ride Your Horse to a Bar Day. Ride Your Horse to a Bar Day. Oh, okay. All right. Does that count for automobiles? No. 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 It has to be an actual horse. This day encourages people to do exactly as the name says. Ride, Ride your, your horse to your, to your favorite bar, bar and, and enjoy a drink, a drink just, just like, like a cowboy. cowboy. Now, now horses, horses have a long history with pubs. With pubs. Okay. okay, many, many of, them of them were coaching inns, inns where stables were attached for horses to be rested or changed on the long journey. journey following the day, now many, now, many of the oldest surviving pubs, pubs mostly in Europe, still, still offer such services. services. Oh, really? So, so it's, it's still possible to celebrate National Ride Your Horse to a Bar Day. I do know that the I take all my. Historical, historical history from Young Guns, guns and Young Guns, guns too. Oh. But when they came, when they came on out, you did. Okay, the bars did have stables for the horses. I'll make you famous. In the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, now let's, let's talk, talk about, about the whiskey. whiskey. Rossville. Rossville. Rossville what? Rossville Union. Okay, Rossville Union. What now, else? George Ross, who in 1847 founded the Rossville Distillery, distillery which is now the Ross and Squibb Distillery campus, he considered Lawrenceburg's original distilleries... He was considered one of Lawrence's first original distilleries okay. and one of America's last prohibition era distilleries. Now, Rossville Distillery was known for their rye whiskeys early on. Now, we've been talking about horses. Yeah. The first mash bill from the Rossville Distillery were produced from a grist mill powered by a single blind horse. Really? Yeah. Okay. This crude method of grinding grain may, meant the distillery was limited to two barrels of whiskey per week. Okay. That's well, all. That, those would probably sell out pretty quickly at the bar then. <laughs> Very much. There you go. Now, we have to give a big thanks to our friend, Chris Cantrell. Okay. Now, he provided this bottle for us. Now, the first time I sipped this, I thought this was a standard rye, nothing special for MGP. Sipping it a second time, and then a third time, and today a fourth time, I now think this is a solid high rye rye for a cast strength offering, especially for that price and that seven-year age statement. I think Benny's did a good job on this particular pick. All right, now, and Chris is one of your buddies in your little uh, yeah, you met whiskey. him. I did, miss, did, I made him. I you met did him. a little uh, party with us with the Bourbon Boys. We did, we did. It was uh, pretty fun. I'll tell you, they they knew a lot about their whiskey. It was um, as much as I know about like 1980 baseball players. They knew about their whiskey. It was pretty big. okay. All right, well, Mark, thanks for the mumble. You're welcome. Whiskey and technology. What a great pairing. Just like the comedic pair of Abbott and Costello. Who's on first? 
That's Are you, seriously? Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, let's get ready for our technology fail of the week. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right, so who do you trust more, hackers or a company? Because essentially hackers said this breach happened, and the company said it didn't happen. And now we're finding out today the company lied to us, and the hackers were right on cue. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I know that they have really good customer service. They do. <laughs> and they normally don't lie when they have a breach. I, well, so I have why, yet to why, find why they a hacking. Need to lie? They don't. I've yet to find a hacking company that announced they actually breached something, and it was a fake breach. They just don't need to because they have so much they can do for their stuff. But now... AT&T has finally confirmed that it was impacted by a data breach affecting 73 million current and former customers after initially denying the leaked data originated from them. This come after AT&T has reported denying for the past two weeks a massive trove of leaked customer data originating from them and their systems that had been breached. While the company continues to say that there's no indication their systems were breached, it now is confirmed that the leaked data belongs to 73 million current and former customers. Maybe, maybe it was... Chat GPT that, that, <laughs> that they made it that up. They're dude. they're using that to. Uh, well, a quote unquote from AT and T based on our preliminary analysis, the data set appears to be from 2019 or earlier, impacting approximately 7.6 million current AT and T account holders and approximately 65.4 million former account holders. Now, let me ask you this: So, that, you're telling me that AT and T has lost 64. 65.4 million account holders since this breach in 2019. That's like a big That's number. That's what you're keying on? Yeah, I was keying on that. So those oh, okay. must have gone to T-Mobile. That's where you get the, un, the unbound company. Now, the company further says that security passcodes used to secure accounts were also leaked for the 7.6 million customers. In 2001 or 2021, a threat actor known as Shiny Hunters claimed to have the stolen data of the 73 million AT&T customers. And guess what? Do, 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 they were right. All right. Fast forward to 2024. And another threat actor leaked the massive data site on a hacking forum stating that it was the same data stolen by Shiny Hunter in 2019. Well, that was our technology fail of the week. Let's now go to a commercial break. When will we come back? We will have Mike's mesmerizing moment. How to see a man about a dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, collected writings for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon, the book repository, and more. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, I kind of keyed up the question I'm going to ask you a little bit earlier in our segments. Mm -hmm. Do photos kind of help us with our memory as we age, or are photos help us have reoccurring memories as we get older? I'm kind of curious. I'm getting a little older. And will the photo album that you see in, like, 50 first dates. You see, like, Adam Sandler goes and he creates a video so that his girlfriend knows what's going on. Does that actually help us remember what's going on? That's a really complicated question because we have to talk about what memory is. Okay. Right? So most people kind of think memory is taking a photograph, and it's not. Memory is very malleable. Okay. So in cases where... People with early onset dementia or Alzheimer are shown pictures. It can help crispen those memories up. Okay. But once those memories are gone or they have no meaning, the pictures can do nothing. Okay. Furthermore, you can actually change somebody's memories by using pictures because the way we are, our memories are influenced. Oh, really? So... Yes, I can literally take a picture of somebody in a, in a an air balloon or something that they've never done and showed it to them, and then they will create the memory. Wow! So it's it's very this is a very hard question to answer. Can it? Yes, but only under certain circumstances. Okay, all right. So if I had a picture of me on a the bridge of the Enterprise, after a while, if you kept on. Feeding that to me, I'd, I believe that I was uh, on the bridge. You already that. have enough delusions. You could probably fit that one in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <all right>. Okay. <laughs> Let's get ready now for our Nathan Nugget. 
This is your Nugget of the Week. All right, we're going to talk about a social media platform that that I'm just so excited about, that I predicted would fail and is on uh, rock bottom processes right now. Have you ever heard of uh, Truth Social? No, never. Truth Social trumps DJT stock plummets days after going public. Did it go public? It did. So Trump Media makes its money exclusively through advertising on Truth Social. Shares of Donald Trump's social media company fell by more than 20% on Monday, less than a week after it began its public trading under the ticker DJT. Donald J. Trump is is the ticker. Is that why he's on my YouTube now asking for money? (laughs) That's... I don't know why. I guess I mean, he must have lost this. Well, the drop comes after Trump Media and Technology Group reported that it had lost nearly $60 million last year by only bringing in around $4 million in revenue. The price plunge caused the former president's net worth to shrink to $1 billion, according to Bloomberg. Shares had surged last week, giving the company an $11 billion evaluation. But experts warned the stock was going to tumble as its main product, True Social, lost users and burns cash. On Monday, shares of the media uh, company, which makes its money exclusively again through advertising, fell to thirteen thirty from the original price the previous week at forty eight sixty six. There you go. Trump Social launched in February of two thousand and twenty two, one year after former president was banned from Twitter, now X, and Facebook in the aftermath of the violent riots at the U.S. Capitol. So Trump Social is having a problem. If I was to ask you for a prediction show, will Trump Social exist at the end of this year? Do you say yes or no? I'm, I'll, I'll say no. I say I say it. Uh, no, I, no, no. I say it'll limp along. It'll limp along, and then yeah. it'll, it'll I just agree. be. It, I think it'll still survive. It'll limp along. It'll limp along with very few people using it. So I use Post.net as uh, as my other uh, Facebook posting and other postings where you can get all of your Tech Time radios at. I do not use. Trump social, it was too difficult to sign up for. make a picture and, of that. And what's that? A we, po- should, we should make a picture of that. Oh, Trump social? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's move to Don't our pick of the day. It hurts. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. Today. Yes. You are drinking Rossville Union Single Barrel Cast Strength Rye. Now, this is Benny's Handpick number 159, 2021 selection. It is MGP, so from Ross and Squibb. It is a straight rye, seven years, 115 proof, and $65 roughly. $65 roughly. $65. Oh, I don't know. $65. That's well, not for you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not for you. It's not. I'm actually going to give it a thumbs down. Uh, it's a little too expensive for me, and I, I didn't like. It was just okay. You had forty dollar whiskey on here that's been much better, but that's just my opinion. Mark's over there shaking his head. Well, that's no, because so. that's because the cheaper the whiskey, the better it tastes to you. Well, not necessarily. You know, that's like that's like. So, are you going to give this a dog. thumbs up, or are you going to give a thumbs down? Uh, you know, I've I've been enjoying rise lately. Okay. Uh, this one has a really nice finish, but the rye burn at the front is. A little bit too much for me, so I'm going to give it a thumbs down. So Mark's going to go over. He's losing his. He's losing. I brought, I brought you a whole <laughs> basket of whiskeys. I think yeah. I'm taking them all home with me. <laughs> so tell us, is this one of your favorites? No, this is not. This is not a high quality rye. I mean, sixty five bucks. You can't find too much more for less than sixty five bucks, bucks unless you go to that bottom shelf. And then, no, we've had some stuff on here that's been like forty five. Canadian bucks that you brought in. <laughs> yeah, that you brought in that was like forty five bucks. It was really for a seven year rye. I, so does, that cast strength. So, uh, so does should that, I continue? <laughs> okay, I guess you should not. <laughs> so this is clearly on Mark's shelf at home. No, this is on Chris's shelf. Oh, you just on bagged Chris's. on our friend's whiskey. No, I like Chris a lot. <laughs> he was a really good expert. I'm just saying for sixty five for sixty five bucks for what the specs are, I give this a thumbs up. It's solid up. MGP rye. Okay, all right. Now, if it was a hundred bucks, no. Okay, okay. No. I, I, it wasn't. I mean. I like don't, don't try and dig yourself out of the hole, buddy. Like he was okay, over there. If it was forty bucks, would you be giving? It yes, a I'd give it a thumbs up. See, that's just uh. that's the twenty five bucks difference, though. Uh. Twenty five bucks. I mean, that buys a lot of so, fireballs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we know we know that his taste is based on a dollar figure. That's so. right. That's right. And it has a cork. He's cheap. It does have a cork. It does cheap, have a cork. Cheap, cheap. All right. Well, we thank Chris for this. All right. Well, we want to thank our listeners for joining the program. Listeners, we want to hear from you. So click on Tech Time Radio. Click on that BR caller and ask us a question on technology in our talkback recording system. 
You can always stay connected for signing up for information on techtimeradio.com. It was an honor to be the host of today's show. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you give us a five-star review on whatever podcast service you're using. And remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.